Hi everyone, my name is Ophelia Jacobson. Today we're on Capitol Hill joined by Representative Kat Kamick. We're going to be talking about the Campus Free Speech Caucus that her and Representative Jim Jordan just announced. Yes. So kind of walk me through the inspiration that led to the creation of this caucus. Well, first, thank you for covering this. This is such an exciting caucus and, and the announcement has been, in the words of President Trump, huge. And uh, we're really excited about it. So, you know, being the youngest Republican woman in Congress, it wasn't too long ago that I found myself as an undergrad student on a college campus. And of course, I experienced as a conservative what so many young college students today are experiencing in their classes. And it was on the first day of my Latin American politics class that I had a professor that told me that white Republican men were the cause of all world conflicts. And I remember then thinking, oh my gosh, how in the heck am I ever going to get past in this class? And it was a long semester, which ultimately resulted in me having to go speak to the university president because there was so much vitriol and hatred in that class for conservatives. So now as a representative, I think it's important that we have national voices that are willing to take up the fight of free speech on our college campuses. Because anymore, it seems like the professors and administrators and really everything that is done on a college campus is all about teaching the kids what to think rather than how to think. And that is so detrimental to our society. We're seeing a result of all this liberal indoctrination on our campuses playing out in our society today between community activists and community organizers and these social justice warriors that really is causing chaos and destruction within our communities today. So that's why it's so important to stop uh, the indoctrination of our students on college campuses that are funded by taxpayer dollars. Now, what exactly will this caucus do? I'm sure a lot of college students like me were very excited to hear about the announcement of the caucus, but kind of walk us through what will this caucus actually accomplish and what can students expect? Well, first and foremost, it's about educating members of Congress about exactly what's happening on college campuses. A lot of members have universities in their districts, but there's quite a few that don't. And even though they hear about it peripherally, this will be an opportunity for students to actually give their testimony to members of Congress and they can hear and have that relationship and that interaction directly. The second thing is going after the worst actors in this space. So there is a rating called a fire rating that rates college campuses all around the country on a scale from green, yellow, and red. For those that are in the red, we want to go to those campuses, work with those administrations, and find out ways that we can better support conservative activists and students on campus. What can we be doing to really put the pressure to make sure that these college campuses are allowing a space and really living up to their mission to inspire and create and foster an environment where every voice is heard? We are all about equal opportunity, not equal outcome. And that is what we need to push. So it's going to be a space for members to learn, but also an outlet for students. We're really excited about it. And I think the fact that we have now federal attention on this issue in a way where we can then channel members that care about this issue into legislation, that's just another step in really leveling the playing field across college campuses. Now, have any members expressed interest in joining the caucus? I know it was just announced on Monday, June 14th, but have any members come to you and said, you know, hey, I'm really excited to join this caucus? Yes. So on Monday, uh, Representative Jim Jordan of Ohio and myself, we announced the caucus. We are co-chairing the caucus together. And I'm so excited that today we have 30 members of the caucus. And that's gonna continue to grow. My hope is that we have over 100 members of the Republican Party here in Washington, D.C., fighting for their students back home in their districts. Now, of those 30 members, is it looking like it's going to be a bipartisan caucus? And if so, why is it so important that it is? You know, we actually have had a couple of Democrats reach out, which is very encouraging because it's about free speech. You don't always have to like someone's opinion, but you have to respect the fact that they have a right to their opinion. And so often we see conservatives either shouted down, shut out, or really just left out of the conversation completely. So it's so important that we have members of both parties fighting and advocating for that fundamental First Amendment right that we all have. That's exactly right. I mean, they always say, I may not like what you have to say, but I'm going to fight for your right to say it. And in 2019, President Trump issued an executive order, uh, you know, emphasizing the importance of campus free speech. How will this caucus be different? How will it actually hold, you know, our professors and our administrators accountable for silencing certain viewpoints that they may not agree with? 
Well, there's the notion of these, these uh, college campuses are funded with federal taxpayer dollars. So we control the purse strings here in the House of Representatives, and it's incumbent upon us to exercise that title authority that we have in controlling those taxpayer dollars. And that is how we can really hold these, account, these college campuses accountable. But I think, you know, it builds upon what President Trump did in that America First agenda, really allowing that next generation of freedom fighters to come up and express themselves, learn in an environment and where, like I said, they have a voice. Because what we've seen so far is that their voices aren't even being heard, let alone having a place to, to even express their opinions. So it's building upon the work that the, the Trump presidency did. But again, this is gonna be a bipartisan effort because we've already had a couple of Democrats approach us saying, yes, this is an issue and we wanna foster an environment on our college campuses that is good for everyone. And why now? Why create this caucus now? You know, obviously this has been a problem for many years. Why are we just creating this caucus now? Do you think it's long overdue? I do think it's long overdue. We've seen the assault on free speech on our college campuses go on for a long time. Like I said, I'm not too far removed from it, maybe a decade. Um, but, you know, I can't speak to why previous Congresses haven't set up this caucus, but I can tell you as the youngest Republican woman in Congress today, six months on the job, this was a priority for us. And having such a strong advocate like Representative Jim Jordan involved, that just further um, solidifies my idea that conservatives across the board are interested and engaged on this issue. Now, shifting the focus to students, obviously you have the University of Florida in your district, oh, go Gators. <laughs> um, and so what can students at the University of Florida and students across the, the country, what can they expect from this caucus, from their representatives like you and Jim Jordan and the other members that are joining? You know, it was um, just this week that Representative Jordan was meeting with students from um, YAF, the Young America's Foundation. And that organization has been working with us on this and they have a tip line that students can call if they're being bullied or if they're having a situation on campus that gives those students legal resources that they wouldn't have had otherwise I think there's a number of great college organizations in the conservative space that work really hard to advocate the conservative message and values that our students really uh, adhere to and like and I think that that is something that we'll be able to coalesce, really be a collection point of all these different groups and all these different opinions in the conservative space. And that will be one more way that we can amplify students' voices on campus. And now looking at the issue of free speech, a lot, a lot of people may say that higher education is a lost cause, that for conservatives, it's not worth it to go to a college or university anymore because when they try to speak up about their beliefs, they immediately get silenced. What would be your message to maybe a high school senior who is really debating, you know, should I go to college and face all these difficulties or should I just take another route such as maybe going to a, a technical school or going to a community college? What would be your message? Is higher education a lost cause in this country? Absolutely not. Higher education is a, a major part of who we are as a society and it's part of the, the experience that Americans have, but it's not always for everyone. We have had this narrative for far too long that every single person needs to go to a traditional four-year college. I think to some of the people that I know who are very successful in some of the conversations we have had in the years past, and they say, you know, I might not have gone to college if I had known, um, and it doesn't always tie back to a free speech issue, but hey, there's a lot of people that go through the Votech schools and they make an incredible living there. Small business owners, they do exceptionally well. I think everyone has the right and the opportunity to follow their passion. So be it a community college program, be it you wanna get right into the workforce, be it you wanna to go to a technical school and learn a trade, which is so critical these days, or if you wanna get a higher degree or a master's degree, I think that is what is great about America is that everyone has that opportunity to do that. So for students who want to, to say, oh, it's a lost cause and I don't think that I'll be heard, I think that's nonsense. I think we have to continue the fight every single day because for every person that says, oh, it's not worth it, that's one more win that we give to the left. And we cannot allow that to happen because our country is worth saving, higher, our higher education is worth saving, uh, K through 12 is worth saving. We have to have a balance in this country if we are going to continue to be the greatest constitutional republic that the world has ever known. And now sitting as co-chair of the Campus Free Speech Caucus, what would you have told your younger self in college, sitting in that Latin American politics classroom, <laughs> you know, a decade ago in college, facing all of this bias from your professors? What would you tell your younger self now? Oof, what would I have told my younger self then? 
you have no idea how this moment is going to come back <laughs> and and stick with you and and it really wasn't i hadn't thought about that moment until really the discussion about bringing this caucus um, together had had started those conversations had started but it's funny because in that moment i was so mad i wasn't really politically inclined in college i was just you know a college student i was working a full-time job i was taking a full load of courses and I think back to that time where I was just so discouraged by the fact that there was a person who was telling me that I didn't have the right to challenge her opinion. And that was really discouraging to me because I hadn't had that kind of pushback um, in that way. And so now I'm like, I'm kind of proud of my, my, my undergraduate self, you know, and my late teens and I guess early 20s. And, I'm just, it, it's a formative moment. Those moments that are really difficult for us, for students that have been bullied, who, like I said, have been shouted down or shut down, or professors have, have been mean to them or failed them, or they've had classmates that have been pretty terrible. Those are moments that really give you grit. And grit is the number one thing that is an indicator for success. If you have experiences where you've been knocked down and you continue to pull yourself back up, you will be a success because that is an American trait, it's an American quality, and it is something that every American has within them, and it's just these moments and experiences that bring it out of us. Great, well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about your new caucus. We're looking forward to seeing what it will accomplish in the next couple of months, in the next couple of years, and I know a lot of college students are very thankful for this, so thank you so much. Thank you so much, appreciate it. My name is Addison Smith and I'm with Campus Reform. Thanks so much for watching and it really helps if you like and leave a comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe right here so you can stay up to date on all of our content. If you wanna help us to continue to make these videos, please donate to the link here. And lastly, if you wanna get hooked up with some of our swag, click here.